I now run two Twitch streams, one on Thursday and one on Saturday. Come hang out with me on twitch.tv slash itscarenterry. If you play an attractive man who's willing to top in a lot of roleplay circles, you're going to get more attention than any other player or character. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about character crafting for good RP. So if you've been roleplaying for a while, you know that there are certain character types that just don't really work for roleplay the same way they might work for a novel or other solo writing. No one wants to respond to a starter of a quiet hooded figure sitting in the corner of a tavern, and it's not just because that starter means now you have to basically write the starter because they gave you absolutely nothing in their starter, negating the reason for them writing the starter in the first place, but anyway, it's also because it's kind of an omen of things to come. Characters that are quiet or standoffish or shy are harder to roleplay with, especially if the person playing them is not a super skilled or experienced roleplayer, because if they're not, then they can just fall back on, well, that's just how my character is, it's hard to make friends with him. And when I see this, my reaction is, okay, cool, I guess I'll stop roleplaying with you because it's kind of feeling like work. But this video isn't about character types that are frustrating to roleplay against. This is about how to craft a character that is actually roleplayable. At the end of the day, to be able to roleplay, you have to make your character talk to other characters. So that's what we're going to get into today. We're going to get into four tips on how I recommend to make sure that happens. And this video builds off of my five things you need to know about your character before you start roleplaying them, which is linked up in the card if you'd like to go watch that first. Instead of focusing on having the strongest character, or the smartest character, or the coolest character, instead focus on making sure your character is likable. And I compare likable to things like strong, or cool, or smart, because all of these things are sort of amorphous characteristics. They're not like one plus one equals likable. So this is an idea that you should have in the back of your mind as you're crafting your character, just like you would when you're trying to craft the strongest character. As you're crafting your character, in the back of your mind, ask yourself these types of questions. Is this character going to be easy for me to write starters for? Are those starters things that people will easily be able to respond to? Is the bio that I write going to interest others that might want to roleplay with this character? Are other roleplayers going to read that bio and maybe even get their own ideas about what plots they might want to do with that character? Do I have plot ideas for this character that I can propose? So from these questions, you should get an idea of what exactly I mean by likability. What I mean is that role-playing with this character should be desirable and easy. Now that doesn't mean all of your plots have to be fluffy, easy coffee shop AUs. They can be dramatic, or problematic, or violent, or anything like that, but it should be easy for you and your partner to come up with those plots and then be excited about them. And all of this is so much easier when you have likability in the back of your mind as you're going through and creating your character. In my five things to know about your character video, I talked about having strengths and weaknesses for your character. So in this video, I'm going to break down a particular method that you can use for crafting those strengths and weaknesses to try to make sure they're balanced. Aristotle defined virtue as a condition intermediate a golden mean, as it's popularly known, between two other states, one involving excess and the other deficiency. A virtuous person aims for the mean. But we're making roleplay characters. We're not trying to actually improve as people, so we're going to aim for that excess or deficiency. Let's take the example of courage, a favorite example of Aristotle scholars. A courageous person understands that some dangers are worth facing and you should try to overcome those fears, but some aren't. So they do experience fear, but when a danger is worth facing, they try to overcome that fear. Courage's deficiency is cowardice. A coward never attempts to overcome their fear. Once they feel that fear, they listen to it, and they run away regardless of what the danger actually is. But what about courage in excess? That would be rashness. A rash person may never experience fear and always run into danger headfirst regardless of the consequences. So what does this mean for strengths and weaknesses? 
When you're crafting a character, you're probably laying out either on paper or in your head their different personality traits, and at some point you'll need to take a step back and think about all of those different personality traits that you've set out for that character. If you have too many traits that are that virtuous golden mean, then you need to pick a few and either make them deficient or ramp them up to excess. And then you have a built-in character arc because you have that excess or deficient trait and you can work on plots with that character that bring them closer to that golden mean. Role players are passionate people. We are on here writing and being creative and playing pretend, so the hobby tends to attract creative, passionate people. And if you're a passionate person, you know nothing is more attractive than someone expressing what they're passionate about. So give your character a passion. Make them an artist of some kind, like a musician or a painter or a sculptor. Or maybe make them an academic who's incredibly into whatever the subject of their research is. Or maybe make them politically active and someone who likes to spread their worldview. Or maybe give them a pet social issue that they spend a lot of time volunteering for and put a lot of energy into. It doesn't matter exactly what it is, but if you give your character something for them to be passionate about, then what you've done is given them something that drives them and pushes them forward and gives them goals as well as something to actively talk about with other characters. And I promise you that most role players are going to find that incredibly relatable. Yeah, I said it. If you play an attractive man who's willing to top, in a lot of roleplay circles, you're going to get more attention than any other player or character. If you're in fandom roleplay, playing the most popular character in the fandom is going to get you a lot of attention. Now, I'm not saying to play a character that you're not truly interested in because it's going to get you more or better roleplay, but what I am saying is if you have an interest in playing what's popular, play them! I think some role players get a little intimidated when it comes to playing something they know will be popular, like they get scared of screwing it up. But if you've never played a popular character in a fandom before, or a popular type of character in a certain circle, there's no reason to not give it a try. You can always stop playing that character at any time in the future. Picking up a character doesn't mean you have to roleplay them for forever. So my recommendation is if you have an interest, dip a toe in that water and see if you like it. So those are my four tips on crafting characters that are good and role playable. And to recap, first focus on likability. Give them interesting strengths and weaknesses. Also give them a passion. And then lastly, take into consideration what's popular. So what do you guys think? What are some other things that you think about or do when you're crafting a character that's going to be good and role playable? Let me know down below. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day. Thank you.